So today we are going to uh, bless the promises we make to support the Good Shepherd community in this coming year. A lot of people are not comfortable talking about money, especially in church. Uh, One reason is because we are often accused by non-church people as just being interested in your money. We're also not comfortable talking about it because it kind of falls into that category of private. But the scriptures talk about money a great deal. Jesus talked about money far, far more than who does what with whom and how they do it. The scriptures are very clear that the Lord of the universe cares quite deeply about how we manage our earthly affairs in terms of the resources that have been entrusted to us. Why? Because our resources are used to connect and care for others, or not. How we use our resources makes an imprint on the world, for good or for ill. We can use our resources to feed the hungry and offer the sacraments of hope and healing and forgiveness and reconciliation, or not. We can choose to use our resources rightly, as the Book of Common Prayer exhorts us to do, or we can fall into the trap of consumerism and debt. So I'm going to give you six principles now about Christian giving, and they will come pretty fast. Um, So you can take notes if you want. Here's the first. Giving is an act of worship. If you read through the Old Testament, you can see how central giving was to the worship of God from the very beginning. When Cain and Abel came to worship, remember Cain and Abel back in Genesis? When they came to worship, uh, they came with something to offer. Noah, Abraham, Moses, I mean, all the way through, worshiping is deeply connected to offering. When people came to worship, they didn't come empty-handed. They came with an offering. Moving to the New Testament, Most of Paul's letters to the churches, actually, when you get right down to it, the nub of them, revolve around asking for and being thankful for financial offerings to help advance the mission of the church and to support the poor. He called financial offerings a fragrant offering, a a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. So that's number one. Giving, um, giving is worship. Number two, sacrificial giving is good. One of the questions people ask is, if I'm to give worshipfully, how much should I give? And the best way to answer that question is to say you should give sacrificially. The tithe principle looms large in the history of redemption, and it shouldn't be ignored. The people of God in every age have made a practice of giving a tenth of their first fruits to the Lord as an act of sacrificial worship. So, in light of the constant testimony of Scripture, a tenth should be a goal. And I know that some here have surpassed that goal long ago and give far beyond a tenth. Okay, but now here's the thing. God doesn't need this from you, okay? This is not about requirement. It's not about compulsion. Stretching yourself, the reason that the scripture talks about this is that stretching ourselves into giving sacrificially is that it grows us spiritually. It grows our ability to plan and to live within our means. It grows our muscles of trust. So as we move, all of us are on this journey, right, of giving. As we move into dedicating a larger percentage of our resources to God, we move, spiritually, we move from being a customer and a patron uh, to being a disciple and identifying ourselves as a, a member of the family of Christ, of belonging to Christ. Okay, so number one, giving is an act of worship. Number two, sacrificial is giving is good. And number three, give faithfully. And by faithfully, I mean two things. One is just, you know, on a regular basis. So some give weekly, some give monthly, like me. Some give annually. But do it 
whatever you decide to do, just do it regularly, uh, uh, consistently. But the second way I mean that giving, give faithfully, is to give with faith and trust in God. God has provided for you in the past. God will provide for you in the future. Now, financial planning, of course, is one way that God provides for us through wise investing, wise saving, wise use of credit, right? But giving faithfully, consistently, and with trust in God removes us. It helps to remove us from that territory of worry and anxiety. And it allows us to live more abundantly, to live more content with what we have. And it grows in, it grows our ability and our desire to share. Okay, so number one, giving is worship. Number two, sacrificial is giving is good. Number three, give faithfully. And number four, give to promote Christ's kingdom. I mean, when we give money, it doesn't just vanish into thin air. It has an impact on the kingdom of God. The vestry leadership of the church has a responsibility. This is their prime responsibility, to use your tithes wisely and appropriately. Budgets are established and maintained that reflect the God-given mission of the church. The vestry is elected. You elect the vestry every annual meeting, usually end of January, beginning of February. You elect a vestry whose job it is to manage the monies of the church so that Christ's body is built up through the proclamation of the word, the administration of the sacraments, and ultimately by the power of the Holy Spirit. Kingdom work costs money, and it's your giving that makes it possible. Your giving makes it possible to get stuff done. So number one, giving is worship. Number two, sacrificial giving is good. Number three, give faithfully. Number four, give to build Christ's kingdom. And number five, give with joy. There's six altogether, so we're almost there. Give with joy. God loves a cheerful giver, as Paul reminds us. So my hope for all of us is that as we give, um, I hope that we do that with a smile and a sense of satisfaction to know that God, by God's grace, has enabled us to work hard, to earn a living, to invest, hopefully, well, <laughs> and to bring a portion of what you have earned to, to God as an offering, a sweet-smelling aroma. And number six, finally, give to God's glory. God is glorified. God is glorified when the people of God give generously. And the giving, our giving, is used properly for the building up of the body of Christ, for the furtherance of the kingdom, and for the needs of those around us. May this all be so for us, for us as individuals and for us as a congregation. May our giving and our use of the gifts be to the glory, honor, and praise of God. So here's my challenge. First, I just want to, you know, invite you to ask the question in the, in the simplicity of your heart, maybe in conversation with your family. How are you thinking about money? What is your emotional history with money? These, these are really big questions. And considering them, what's your history, your emotional history with money? How do you think about money? Considering those two questions will lead you into all kinds of fruitful territory in terms of your own growth and your own freedom. And secondly, wonder about your giving. Is it with, with worship? Is it sacrificial? Is it faithful? And is it joyful? So here's my prayer. Whatever it is, is whether it's small or great, whether it's a half a percent or 50%, check the condition of your heart. Right? May all that we give, all that we give, and all that we do be to the glory of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who is the giver of every good and every perfect gift. Amen.